Welcome back. We've looked at NLP techniques involving words as well as sequences of words with engrams. Now we turn our attention to sentences. Natural human languages have grammar, a structure, that we call syntax. Formal languages are small and regular compared to natural language. You can think of a programming language as a formal language, but linguists study formal languages as well in order to better understand the properties of human language. A formal grammar is a set of rules for rewriting strings recursively to form a correct structure. Natural language could never be pinned down to a set of rules because human language is so complex. Consider the following sentence. This is an example of a garden path sentence. Because you start to mentally parse it as you read it, then realize you have been led down a garden path and can't find your way out of this maze. The term parsing refers to the process of taking an input sentence and breaking it down into its syntactic structure. We'll look at parsing more in the next video. The problem with this sentence is horse raced, which makes us think the verb is raced when it really is fell. After being misled by this garden path sentence, we see that the correct way to read it is that the horse, and the horse we're talking about is the one that raced past the barn, that horse fell. A context-free grammar, CFG, is a set of production rules. Keep in mind that CFGs are just concerned with syntax. They have nothing to say about meaning. CFGs can be used in two ways to generate valid statements in the formal language or to parse a statement to check if it is valid. CFG concepts developed in the 1950s chiefly by Norm Chomsky. Independently, John Backus and Peter Nair developed the same ideas in creating the Algol programming language. Computer science students have probably encountered Bacchus Nair BNF notation in query syntax in database courses. In this notebook, which is in the GitHub, we'll look at a small set of production rules and a set of terminals. A terminal is a symbol that cannot be broken down, and these will be the words in our vocabulary. I've implemented this in Python so we can play around with it, and I've made two cheats here. One is I've selected noun terminals that start with a constant, so I can always use determiner A and don't have to worry about A versus AN. And I've also carefully chosen the verbs that will make sense with the nouns. I've implemented a small set of production rules in a Python dictionary. We always need a start symbol, so this indicates that a sentence in this limited grammar here will always be composed of a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. So what's a noun phrase? A noun phrase could be a determiner followed by noun. It could be a determiner adjective noun. What's a verb phrase? A verb phrase could just be a verb by itself or a verb followed by a prepositional phrase. And our prepositional phrase is the preposition determiner noun. And then here we have our terminals. What kind of adjectives, determiners, nouns, verbs, and prepositions are allowed in this grammar? I've written a small function here, which will use the production rules, starting with the start symbol, to generate random valid sentences from our production rules. The function will generate one expansion. And what it will do is starting with the start symbol, so our expansion starts off like this, and it will continue going through all of the tokens in the expansion to try to replace them with the right-hand side of one of our rules. So we think of all of these keys as being the left-hand side, and the right-hand side, sometimes we just have one choice, sometimes we can make a random choice here. So it keeps doing that until, until new expansion is just a list of terminals. And we see here 
I ran the expansion function five times and generated five different sentences. A sad clown plays, the silly dog runs, and so forth. So every time I run this, because I'm using random selections, I'll get slightly different results. As I said, there's also a recursive version. And the nice thing about production rules is that you can always add rules. Here I'm adding a rule for what a verb phrase can be. A verb phrase can be a copular verb, which is in our case just going to be is, followed by an adjective. This accounts for copular sentences where the copular verb is a linking verb, usually be, that connects the subject in a descriptive adjective, as in the sentence, she is smart. Here we're going to keep be in the present tense singular, so it's just always going to be is. And now we can generate some new sentences. The dog is sad. This is the copular construction that we just added. And you can see that these production rules are indeed quite productive. An important concept in syntax is constituency, the observation that groups of words combine to form a structure that acts as a single unit. For example, noun phrases and prepositional phrases have constituency. Sample phrases are underlined here. In the sentence, the book is on the table. The book acts as a single unit and on the table acts as a single unit. We could rearrange these in the sentence. You could say on the table is the book. A little awkward, but it works grammatically. The second sentence has two noun phrases, one for the subject and one for the direct object of the verb chased. The carefree girl is a noun phrase acting as a subject. The dancing butterfly is a noun phrase acting as an object. We'll get more into these sentence structures in the next video. In the third sentence, the pronoun she is a noun phrase and the subject of the sentence. And we can consider the whole rest of the sentence danced her cares away as a verb phrase. Constituents are hierarchical. Constituents can contain other constituents. And we'll see that more clearly in the next video. A phrase has a head word, which will be a noun for a noun phrase, a verb for a verb phrase, and the preposition for a prepositional phrase. The head words were not identified in the production rules we looked at earlier because they're not significant for CFG. However, when we look at different kinds of sentence parsers in the next chapter, the head word becomes important. We've seen how the production rules can be used to generate valid sentences. The other use of production rules in CFG is to check if a sentence has valid grammar. In Notebook 2 in the GitHub, I have some code that implements what I have essentially on these slides, but I'm going to focus on the chapter content since I think it's more important than the code. Parsing of a statement or sentence can be done in many ways. I'm going to demonstrate a bottom-up approach that's a version of the CYK algorithm. And the CYK being three names of the developers of this algorithm. The first thing to do, which we see at the bottom of this spreadsheet screenshot, is to assign a part of speech tag to each word. This can be done by making a reverse dictionary from what we did earlier so that the right-hand side is now a key and the left-hand side is the value. And then it's a matter of a simple lookup. Doing that for the sample sentence, the happy cat plays, we have these parts of speech, determiner, adjective, noun, and verb. If we had more than one part of speech, we would have to carry the possibilities forward but in our case, it's much simpler. In this first round, we looked at just one word at a time. In the second round, we'll look at two tokens at a time, and our tokens now are just their parts of speech. So first we have determiner adjective. Nothing matches that, so we write an X. Then we have adjective noun. No production rule matches that. We have noun verb, and nothing matches that. On the third round, we're going to look at three tokens at a time. 
Determiner adjective noun is a noun phrase. Adjective noun verb is nothing. And then finally on the last round we'll look at four tokens. Determiner adjective noun and verb gives us a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase, which is a sentence. Early parsers used a variation of the CYK algorithm, but today other approaches are used for parsing. Parses are more conventionally displayed in either a tree structure or bracket notation. There are several nice interactive syntax tree generators available online. Here's one I like at mshang.ca slash sentry. You type in the bracket notation, which is a bit tedious, and when you hit enter, it will render the tree for you. So we see that our sentence is a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. The noun phrase is the happy cat. Our verb phrase is simply the verb plays. The context-free grammars we looked at are obviously quite limited. Even if we expand the rules and terminals, it would still be quite limited compared to the variations we find in human language. Algorithms that parse CFGs have to do an exhaustive search of every possible parse because with some sentences more than one parse is possible. A natural evolution of CFGs is to consider the most likely choice at each point in the parse. This is as simple as assigning a probability to each production rule. These are called PCFGs, probabilistic CFGs, and you see that we've actually just attached a hypothetical probability to the production rules. As parsers continue to improve, probabilistic approaches dominated. Currently, the top syntax parsers use neural networks that were trained on huge amounts of sentences. So where do these huge amount of sentences come from? They can come from tree banks. A well-known tree bank is the Penn Tree Bank. You can read more about it here. The Penn Tree Bank is owned by the LDC. This is the source of the data. And this is the kind of information you can get from it. These huge numbers of sentences were hand annotated by language experts. NLTK includes a 10% sample of the Penn Tree Bank. You can import it like this and then look at a few of those many, many hundreds of thousands of files. Once we narrow it down to a file, we can extract the words, the tagged words, and a parsed sentence. The parse will be shown in bracketed form, and you can see the structure by the indents. So we have a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. Another interesting corpus that's somewhat related to parsing is the CONNL, Conference on Computational and Natural Language Learning, their chunk corpus. So a chunk in NLP is a word or a sequence of words that acts as a constituent, somewhat like a phrase, such as a noun phrase. So chunking identifies the chunks, but doesn't put them in a hierarchical structure. A lot of parsers will do chunking as a first step, though. So here I'm importing that corpus and then just printing out two sentences. This first sentence is a little long. Let's look at the second sentence. We can see all of the chunks, which are just the phrases within the sentence. And we'll encounter the concept of chunking when we look at other parsers. In this video, we looked at context-free grammars to see what they can teach us about the structure of language and to consider their limitations. I think it's fair to say that CFGs are of more theoretical interest than practical interest in current NLP techniques. It's important to be familiar with theoretical or historical techniques because these approaches get stored away in your mental toolkit and may just prove useful in your own projects, perhaps applied in a different way. Today I'll leave you with a quote from the French novelist Gustave Flaubert. Sentences must stir in a book like leaves in a forest, each distinct from each despite their resemblance. Mm -hmm.